Bokitov covering mine, Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Breaking news this morning coming out of Russia. Maria Zakharova, Russia's uh, foreign, foreign spokesperson for the government there, uh, has stated that Russia will not give back Crimea to Ukraine, something that President Donald Trump has backed Haley, his United Nations ambassador, who stated recently at the United Nations that sanctions will not be lifted on Russia until Crimea The sovereignty of Crimea is handed back over to the Ukrainian government. Now, Russia has spoken, and they will not give back this territory. Uh, Maria Zakharova stated here, we do not return our territories. Crimea is Russian territory, Zakharova said in a weekly briefing, reaffirming Moscow's longstanding position that the issue is permanently closed. Where will that leave the rest of the world? How is that going to leave President Trump? He again is standing in the breach as John F. Kennedy was. And you're going to see in this broadcast here in just a moment, much like JFK, who stood up against uh, the, the, the government itself back during the 60s and how he went against the CIA, the FBI, and was overturning all of the uh, intelligence agencies and trying to bring down the corruption of the government ended up costing him his life. Now Trump is faced with the same situation, not saying that he's a saint by no means, but the point being that uh, we are seeing more and more evidence that does suggest that there is something going on in the background to try to topple him from power. It could be part of an elite plan to begin with, only to cause the nation to rise up in turmoil, to be able to disarm the nation, something the United Nations has wanted all along. Who knows if President Trump is playing that part of the game or if he is really sincere trying to turn the country around only to be thwarted at every turn that he makes there. Going to go into that in just a moment, but let's take a real quick look here at, um, uh, as of course, as Reuters reported this out as well, Trump expects Russia to return Crimea to Ukraine. According to the White House there, that had already came out. But let's take a look at some things about Crimea and their own choices as a nation. Those of you who already are well aware, in 2014, Crimea's referendum voters back Russia Union Uh, That was published everywhere. It was 95.5% of the voters in Crimea have supported joining Russia, officials say, after half the votes have been counted in a disputed referendum. Now, the whole world has come against Russia for this, saying that this was Russia's fault. Uh, why a country is at war and blaming Russia for invading Ukraine, which was never the case. It was a coup d'etat. Even uh, the uh, Miss Le Pen, who was running for the president of France, stated the same thing. There's been many world leaders that have clearly seen that Russia was never the invading force. Ukraine's own uh, own um, uh, uh, the state's attorney found a document recently stating that uh, Ukraine's uh, former president Yanukovych invited Russia in because the coup d'etat that was trying to topple his government, trying to avoid a civil war. Uh, Russia did come and secure Crimea, but again, President Putin knew then that the Crimeans never wanted to be a part of Ukraine in the first place. And so it gave him a little bit more leverage, not to mention there was a Russian naval base in Crimea, a strategic point for the Russian Federation, and something that had to be guarded with, 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 uh, at, at, at all cost. Uh, now, just to kind of show you, though, that this is not the first time that Crimeans have been trying to get their autonomy, not just because of the t- uh, coup d'etat that took place inside of uh, Ukraine, but we can go back. This article right here, let me just kind of back up so you can see what this is on right here, uh, orfworld.org, uh, excuse me, refworld.org, uh, actually put out uh, this information here, information here, the UN Refugee Agency, uh, the chronology for Crimea, Russians in Ukraine. It's a very interesting article. I'll have a link to this inside the uh, video in the description below, so do check this out. Gives the entire history of Crimea, of what they've been going through. Well, not the entire history, only from 1917 forward, uh, after the collapse of uh, Russia under the Tsarist uh, regime there. In fact, before the collapse of Russia and the Tsarist regime, Crimea had been a part of Russia for 200 years. Uh, this changed only when the Vatican slipped in their own, uh, um, well, what would you call them, Jesuits. Lenin and Stalin both were Jesuits, trained Jesuits, uh, and they were sent in there to bring about an atheistic belief in the country. The main purpose was to crush the Eastern Orthodox uh, faith, which they 
went on to dismantle as much as possible. My wife's family who grew up in the Soviet Union can well tell you that there, there was one surviving religion in the Soviet Union that had no problem surviving, and that was Roman Catholicism, but all other religions were forbidden and outlawed. Uh, going though, I want to really look at this though, starting in 1991, a referendum, was, a referendum was held in Crimea on restoring autonomy to the region. Over 80% of the electorate participants, of which 93.26% supported the restoration of Crimea ASSR as a subject of the USSR as a party to the Union Treaty. So as early as 1991, of course this is during the time uh, when the Soviet Union was breaking up, but they still wanted to be part of Russia. Why? <clears throat> well, ethnically, Crimea is some 90% Russian uh, descendants to begin with. They have been part of the Russian Federation for 200 years since 1917 and on. So they've always been identified as part of Russia, never really as part of Ukraine. Uh, it also speaks in here about the 1954 uh, uh, Crimea being handed over to Ukraine. And in fact, there was another article that I read already that 1954 was also deemed to be an illegal handover to Ukraine. Any of the, uh, the autonomous governance that would be handed over to Ukraine, that this was all done illegally. Crimea has already voted on this. But we find on several occasions, uh, all the way to 1994, that Crimeans have constantly voted in order to have their independence of Ukraine and to be part, either be independent or part of Russia. And this is something that was continually stamped out by the Ukrainian government and they just never have been able to secede from them. But yet they have tried over and over and over to get away from Ukrainian rule. Well, mainly because we see a lot of fascism in Ukraine, and this is not what Russians want to be a part of. This is something that the Russians fought against in World War II, and something that Ukrainians absolutely have no desire to be a part of. Uh, so you can take a look at this article, very interesting. It shows all the different times that they tried to vote for their independence, but it was never really granted until 2014, when the nation goes into a civil war uh, of, of sorts because of, the, uh, because of the breakup of Ukraine and the toppling of the coup d'etat, uh, then Ukrainians begin to fight against each other, more so on ethnic lines, the Russian versus the, uh, the non-Russian Ukrainian citizens that begin to fight with one another. Moving on into other news here, InfoWars, Russian insiders fear Washington establishment will assassinate Trump. This is something that has just come out uh, on uh, that came out uh, yesterday by Paul Joseph Watson there. It says Russians insiders are fearful that Washington establishment will attempt to assassinate Donald Trump according to a magazine with deep ties to the globalist elite. Um, that's, wouldn't doubt it. The Illuminati, the elites, all of them are nothing but a bunch of devils to begin with and I'll have no part of any of that. The revelation is buried deep within a foreign policy article about how the Kremlin is confused about how to respond to Trump's role as a revolutionary insurgent with a mission to dismantle America's old regime. From conservatives with Russian policy makers and experts, the article makes it clear that power players in Moscow are concerned about Trump even being able to see out of his first four years in office. Well, it seems to stand true, as we mentioned to you already. I know some people don't like it when I compare him to JFK, but if you look at the things that are going on in the Trump administration and not just look at Trump as the man himself, maybe you might begin to realize that he is acting more like JFK, especially those that he has appointed, some of the ones that he's appointed with him, such as the case of Michael Flynn, the general uh, that has now been let go by the administration. This article here on Bloomberg, uh, written by Eli uh, Lake was interesting. Can't say I agree with everything that Eli has to say in his, in his views here, but one thing he does bring out is the political assassination of Michael Flynn. And what's interesting is some of the sources that he spoke with here as he actually begins to uncover uh, a pattern of things that is actually going on. He states here, Rep Representative Devin Nunes, the Republican chairman of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, told me Monday that he saw the leaks about Flynn's uh, conversations with Kislak as part of a pattern. 
there does appear to be a well-orchestrated effort to attack Flynn and others in the administration. He said, from the leaking of phone calls between the president of foreign leaders to what appears to be high-level FISA court information to the leaking of American citizens being denied security clearances. It looks like a pattern. Now, the interesting thing, though, that a lot of people are not aware of is that uh, Michael Flynn was very much looking at trying to revamp the FBI and the CIA. He is, was very much like that in the days of the Kennedy administration to completely turn it inside out and try to rid it of all the corruption that it has to begin with. And of course, the CIA works very close with the intelligence community of the Vatican. So that's going to be something that's not just going to go over except like a lead balloon. So the Vatican has a very strong tie to the CIA and will do everything they can in order to keep this game rolling the way they want it to go. Uh, if you get down closer to the end of the article, this is when you really begin to realize, like it says in uh, 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 Paul's article over here, what Paul writes about here. Um, uh, Paul Watson, that is, that Trump is the target. Notice what it says in the closing of this article here. In the normal times, the idea that the U.S. official entrusted with our most sensitive secrets would secret, secretively disclose them to undermine the White House would alarm those worried about creeping authoritarianism. Imagine if intercepts of of call between Obama's incoming national security advisor and Iran's foreign minister leaked to the press before the nuclear negotiations began. The howls of indignation would be deafening. In the end, it was Trump's decision to cut Flynn loose. In doing this, he caved in to his political and bureaucratic opposition. Noons told me Monday night that this will not end well. First, it's Flynn. Next, it will be Kelly Conway, then it will be Steve Bannon, then it will be Ryan uh, Priebus, he said. But another way, Flynn is only the appetizer. Trump is the entree. So clearly they're after Trump. And of course, Steve Bannon is definitely a target, even though he is a Catholic himself. The Pope himself is not very fa favorable of Steve Bannon. Why? Because he is very much after Pope Francis and trying to say that there has been an overtaking of the Vatican by the Jesuits themselves. Well, he's right about that, but doesn't matter which side of the Catholic authority takes power one way or the other. It's all for a new world order. Uh, the U.S. media reports on Trump's links to Russia's intelligence laughable site. No facts, says the Kremlin. But of course, who believes the Kremlin in the first place? Not to say that there's not a lot of truth that the Kremlin has stated, but my point is, is that's the very cliche that has become in Western media. Everything that RT says or the Kremlin says, they consider to be laughable as well. But the thing is, is maybe the Kremlin is actually telling some factual information. It says Moscow has criticized news report alleging associates of Donald Trump had numerous contacts with Russian intelligence during the election, with the Kremlin spokesman complaining that it's hard to distinguish fact from fiction in the U.S. media lately. That even goes back to Flynn, Michael Flynn himself. The thing was, was the conversation was disclosed to the public of what was actually said. And yes, Moscow's own man actually asked about the lifting of sanctions, but Flynn did reply to him. That will be something that we will discuss with the administration once he is in full power. All right, so the thing is, is he didn't break any laws, and that was something that was also acknowledged. But they say that Flynn was a concern. But kind of like the article that is written here uh, that we saw here on uh, Ref World. You can, excuse me, not Ref World there, but uh, uh, the article that was written about this to begin with, you cannot help but uh, wonder the political assassination of Michael Flynn, that there is a conspiracy, a conspiracy to take Trump out. If you ever want to talk about bringing about a new world order, that's what really concerns me there. It seems, though, that Trump is really trying to do good for the country. Maybe not in every way that I would like or you would like, perhaps, but the thing is, it seems that he's trying to do good. But those actions, and especially if something were to happen to him personally or derail him, not even, it, not even taking the worst that is considered here by Paul, jo Paul Joseph Watson saying that they would like to assassinate him, but what if something, what if they were to take and bring him down out of the presidency because they tried to falsify or link a tie to Russia directly and then say that he is not fit to be president and then impeach him? 
that would definitely cause a major uproar in the United States. That's exactly what the New World Order would like. They're trying to show that nationalism does not work, and they're trying to do it and not have a war. But at the rate that they're going in the background, Trump wanting to have good ties with Russia, but at the same time, the military establishment is not slowing down whatsoever on its troop buildup against Russia's border. Now Romania, just last night, I got the information after our last broadcast that Romania has now received 500 tanks, troops, and equipment there, armored personnel carriers. 500 in the country of Romania. Now, that doesn't say exactly how many of the tanks were, didn't differentiate, di differentiate between who was the true number of troops and who was the, the number of tanks, etc. But the point is the buildup of military power that no doubt threatens Russia's security is something that's becoming of a grave concern. What will be next? And what is really pushing all of this to begin with? The elite of the world? Or is it demonic beings that are in control of the elite of the world? Or maybe are they the very demonic beings to begin with? You know, I, I, I have to always refer back. I cannot help but think of the very words of Paul written in the Bible when Paul made the comment, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. I have a feeling that some of these movies they brought out here in the last decade or so here about an alien invasion may not just be as far as fantasy as we think. And maybe these demonic beings, they call them aliens, I call it more demons, fallen angels, that have been trying to bring about wars here on this earth. We know that when there is a war on here on earth, there's wars going on in the heavens above us there. Demons fighting against one another. Their kingdom is truly divided and they're trying to bring down to this earth that division. And that's why they want to kill us off as well. Because why? You, as a child of God, are stronger than those demons are. They don't want you to know that. Think about the times when David faced the giants in the land in his day, the Nephilim. Joshua said, we are greater than they are and more capable to take the land. Even he stood against these giants that were in the land there. These Nephilim, these sons of fallen angels that were still on the earth even then. I think we're about to be faced with something very similar to that. And by the way, I have to keep reminding a little bit. I will be doing so here for the next few days. We'll take a little break afterwards. But don't forget the meeting we have in Jerusalem. We are going to be dealing with what Israel is about to face. They are facing a tremendous, tremendous fight for survival. And Rome is looking to bring them down. And if the Pope of Rome said he would be willing to baptize aliens, imagine what the Pope of Rome is planning on bringing to Israel as a Messiah, a demon, a demon from another dimension, whatever the case may be. Is this what CERN's all about? I have no idea, but we are going to warn the Israeli community of just how evil, from a prophetic standpoint, we have seen biblical prophecies that have been unfolding. We've been sharing many of those here with you guys here. Some we have not shared, but we're going to share them with our Jewish brothers and sisters to wake them up because they're about to be in a fight for their life. You can be a part of that, support it. You can even come to the meeting there. We do have limited seating. Uh, uh, available, but if you'd like to be a part, send us an email, stephenbenoon at gmail.com, and we'll definitely respond to you. If you'd like to support it, israelinewslive.org. You can go to our website there, you can donate there, or at the end of this broadcast, our mailing address will appear as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. you're watching Israeli News Live. Be sure to check out the channel you're watching this on. We do have friends that that uh, have permission to load our videos there, but you won't have the information necessarily unless they think to put it in there uh, in the description below. So look to see that you're on Israeli News Live on YouTube. I'm Stephen Benin. Shalom.